Oh man, you know, I got married, you know, um, I was in Nepal for three months, I spent one week in um, New Delhi and one week in Thailand, um, I'm still a little jet lagged, I don't even know how I'm going to be able to stay up for this whole fight tonight, you know, I might have to crash out here backstage for a little bit just so I'm well rested, man, trust me, man, jet lag is worse than 12 rounds of boxing, I don't care, I don't care what nobody says, man, it does something to your head, man, I mean, it makes you feel all foggy, it, it's not a pleasant feeling, man, but um, it is great to be back. Actually, my um, first night back, I got in at 11.30 at night before I finished grabbing my bags and putting them into the hotel room. I was outside of the hotel, and a young woman said to me, she goes, aren't you that boxer? So uh, I know New York got love for your boy one time. It's, it's really great to be back in this uh, city where they love boxing and they, and they love what I do. And I get respect around town, man. Um, it's a beautiful thing, man. I love the Barclays. I love New York. Uh, it got cold yesterday. It's not that cold today. A little, little bipolar, a little emotional right now. But, uh, but it's good, man. I haven't even been back home yet. I haven't seen my family yet. So after I'm done with New York, I'll get back to see my oh, family. So and that's going to be a, a, a pleasant thing as well. So you got married, and then you've been over there. You're just getting back? Yeah, man, because um, I did. I got to do two things. Kill two birds with one stone. We're gonna. I got to make an appearance here for the fans um, and for you guys and just, just to be around boxing again. Plus, I got to see my doctor when I got into town. I got into town on Monday night. I saw my doctor Wednesday morning, and I'm going to do my last checkup with him uh, Monday before I leave on Tuesday. So we're killing two birds with one stone. I've been doing some um, therapy every day except for today. I'll be working with my therapist tomorrow and Monday from uh, HSS Hospital. And we just multitasking, man. But yeah, man, I'm here seeing y'all before I go see my mama, man. So hey, man, I, I hope y'all appreciate that. I saw you at the, the podcast. <laughs> yesterday from Brooklyn to the world with Paulie I was at the table with y'all man I've always wanted to ask have you guys ever spoke about the infamous don't duck me son <laughs> not duck me son oh that was so have you ever <laughs> joked about it now since that time has come we don't do the you know at the at the end of the day you know the moment that that manifested right Paulie Milanaji was the WBA walkerweight champion of the world as soon as he lost the title to Adrian Broner, I had no intentions of gunning for him no more. I was, you know, like the fighters today, like like many people calling me out right now, okay? Mm -hmm. I was calling out whoever was champion, right? That's what happens when you're trying to come up through the rankings. You want to fight the best. You want to fight the champs. He was a champ. Once when he wasn't the champ, I didn't even, I, there's nothing to talk about no more, you know? And no fight contracts ever got proposed and he actually admitted yesterday he said he wasn't really trying to take that fight. so if he did <laughs> if, right there right there oh, don't duck me son <laughs> <laughs> if if, the, if he would have stayed uh, uh, winning then maybe there would have been an opportunity for him to legitimately duck me or not duck me but like I said man you know that's why I don't really like talking about what ifs in boxing because all that matters is what is what not what is not. You know what I mean? I got it.